Your smartphone knows a lot about you in some cases too much. Certain features and settings are going to be enabled on your Android phone by default, and we think you might want to disable them right now. Thanks for watching 95 Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be notified about all our future uploads. A quick little process though that you might want to do before we get into the meat of this video is to enable the developer options mode if you haven't done so already, as if we mention some things, you might be left scratching your head trying to find each of these settings and features. So to do so, just head to settings, about phone, and then build number. All you have to do is tap this seven times, enter your pin or pattern, and you'll have access to a wonderful world of extra phone functionality. We'll also be using a number of devices throughout this video to demonstrate that it is possible to adjust most of these settings on just about every Android phone out there. But without any further ado, let's get into it. If you have a slightly older phone or a phone with modest or a low amount of RAM pre-installed, you can actually limit or disable the standard background process limit. And this might not make an immediate difference to things such as your day-to-day -day experience, especially on day one, but further down the line, limiting just how many concurrently running background apps might actually help improve your device performance. If you want to adjust this, you don't necessarily have to. You can head to settings, developer options, and then background process limit. From here, you can actually set the process limit between zero on four and on most devices. This means you can kind of play around to find the right setting for you and your specific device. Like we said, it might not make a difference now, but further down the line, it might really help your phone out performance wise. A way to potentially reduce battery usage on your phone is to disable Wi-Fi and Bluetooth scanning on your Android. In simple terms, these features mean that your phone is able to scan for available Wi-Fi networks and Bluetooth devices even when both of those settings are actually disabled. And this gives you better location accuracy or GPS pinpointing when using kind of location-based apps. Both settings are found in the same place on Android on Pixel, so it's hard not to disable Bluetooth and Wi-Fi scanning at the same time here. To do so, just head to Settings, Location, Wi-Fi Scanning and Settings, Location, Bluetooth Scanning, and then toggle these options on or off as you see fit. Your Android phone and Google Maps are more than capable of tracking your entire movement history. And while some people simply don't care, you might not want to let that happen automatically. It's worth noting this is tied to your account and is used to give you better personalized results in things such as maps, plus better recommendations based upon the places that you do go. It's kind of a trade-off that you'll need to decide if you're happy to make. There are a couple of options though that can be useful. You can disable the feature entirely, or you can set your location history to auto-delete after a preset period, anywhere from three to 36 months to be precise. To adjust or disable the Google location history default settings on your Android phone, open up settings, head to location, location services, Google location history, and then sign into your Google account. This should open the activity controls page or panel, and you can toggle location history off completely or scroll down and select to choose an auto delete option. Then select the auto delete activity older than this should open the activity controls page and then you can toggle location history off completely or scroll down and select choose an auto delete option and then select the auto delete activity older than drop down menu from between three, 18 or 36 months. Sometimes apps on your Android phone will access mobile data or your Wi-Fi connection to do things like update your feeds in the background or save time on loading until you reopen them. However, with potentially hundreds of apps on your phone able to do this, you can rack up a ton of data usage if you're on a limited plan. Enabling this feature can actually pause or limit notifications on your phone, but you do have the ability to adjust this on an app by app basis. So that means any apps you select will be affected. There are a few ways to enable or disable background data usage for apps installed on your phone though. The easiest and the most obvious is to head to the app in question by opening settings, apps, obviously select that app that you want to adjust data settings of, then mobile data and Wi-Fi, and then find the background data option. Another way to reach this menu and see up-to-date information on just how much data an app is using on Pixel phones is to head to settings, network and internet, internet, non-operated data usage, select an app that you want to view, and then background data. Being able to quickly disable or even enable many of the hardware sensors on your Android phone with a single tap is not only useful, it's also great for the ultra privacy conscious. This toggle is actually not available right out of the gate and instantly blocks hardware sensors such as the camera, the microphone, GPS, accelerometer, compass, and much more. You need to first ensure that developer options are enabled as we mentioned at the top of this video, then head to settings, 
system, developer options, quick settings, developer tiles, and then centers off. You might actually need to add this toggle to your notification shade if it's not automatically added, which you can do by finding the edit button within the quick settings panel and then dragging that into view. Enabling this toggle will just block access to all of those sensors and trying to do things like open the camera app and it should constantly crash or just close to indicate that access to the sensor is being blocked. In a bit to help improve the Android OS, you might not realize that certain diagnostic and usage information is shared with Google when you encounter things such as issues and app crashes or even device slowdowns. It's worth noting that this information is completely anonymous and normally only relates to things such as battery level, the app you're using and the quality of your network and Bluetooth connections. Because of that, it's fair if you want to disable these added settings on your Android, and there are plenty of other people to provide that information. To disable usage and diagnostic information, just open Settings, Google, tap the upper right three dot menu, and then Usage and Diagnostics, and you can just toggle that off. Whether or not you're signed into your Android phone with your Google account, you'll actually get search or banner ads across some 2 million plus websites that do use Google's ad platform. These ads get tailored to your interests and even your commonly used search terms to attempt to make these ads more relevant to you. Understandably, you might not want such ads appearing and Google does make it fairly simple to disable and adjust these ad settings on your Android phone. To adjust these, if you want to make them at all, open settings, Google ads, tap your Google account, data and privacy, ad settings, and then add personalization. This panel will show you all of the information that Google has gleaned from data that you've provided to create a profile based upon your account. If you want less personalized ads on your account, just toggle this setting to off. Location tracking can be a good and a bad thing all at the very same time. Good because you get better directions and local information, bad because your privacy is being encroached upon. You might still want some of those features of location tracking though, but you're not happy to give away your exact location all of the time and to certain apps and services. Luckily, Google does offer the ability to disable precise location tracking on an app by app basis if you wish. If you have a phone that has recently been updated to Android 12, the very first time that you do run a new app, you will get a pop-up to indicate the difference between precise and approximate location, and you can select one that just applies to you and you would prefer. This doesn't necessarily apply to all apps that you've already allowed access to your precise location though, so you will need to make some changes. If you do want to revoke that privilege, then you can just open settings, location, app location permissions, select any app you're given access to, and then use precise location and toggle that on or off as you see fit. With certain apps like SatNav or even ride hailing apps like Uber, this might cause some issues, but for most other applications on your phone, they will just work fine not using precise location data. You can also revoke location access from apps here as you see fit. You may never even have heard of instant apps even after they were unveiled way back at I.O. in 2016 by Google. The idea is simple. You want to do something online such as pay for a pizza via a delivery service, instead of needing to download a full version of an Android app to access the most important payment and even delivery functionality, you can just use the specific portion of that app without installing an APK. This hasn't really taken off in quite the way that Google might have hoped, but there are a few developers using instant apps as a discovery method when you actually search for applications online using Google search. For that reason, we'd probably suggest disabling this by heading to settings, apps, default apps, opening links, and then disabling instant apps. While your lock screen does block people from getting access to your device with biometric data, PIN, or even passcode, it isn't completely foolproof because of how notifications are displayed by default, and a lot of people can just glean information from these. Android does allow you to hide notifications in a similar way though to how iOS handles them. Rather than display who a message or notification is from and the message contents, you'll just see a notification from the app icon itself and whether it's waiting or not. You can even disable notifications from appearing in your lock screen entirely if you want an extra peace of mind and that extra privacy security. Enabling this is easy as heading to settings, notifications, and then sensitive notifications. Although that's available on Pixel phones, on Samsung phones, and some other manufacturers out there, head to settings, lock screen, notifications, and then use the hide content toggle. So there's 10 settings that we think you should disable more or less right away when you get your brand new Android phone. If you want that extra level of privacy, we want to know though what setting or settings you disable as soon as you power on your Android phone for the first time or even later down the line. Is there something you literally cannot do without or you must block straight away? Let us know down in the comment sections below. But as always, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. And this is Damon with 95 Google saying I will speak to you later.